Now, I am really excited to welcome our speaker today. Um, Dr. Gregory M. Waite is the president of the Washington Internship Institute, where he oversees all aspects of the Institute's programs, including the internship and faculty fellows programming. Greg is committed to the mission of the Washington Internship Institute to provide active learning grounded in academic disciplines and personal reflection to students through quality, ideally suited internships. Dr. Waite has published and presented on a range of higher education issues including diversity, assessment, and undergrad research. Uh, he received his BA from Pomona College and his PhD in English from the University of Delaware. So welcome, Dr. Waite. Um, we're so excited to hear from you. I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you so much, Meg, and thank you for being here, Greg. Uh, internships are so important to me. Um, I was just thinking back today, knowing that I was going to be speaking with you and really my, I had one job right out of college. And then right after that, I, I needed to find what else I was going to do. I was only a year or so out of college. I was able to find an internship in, uh, for a production company on a website job board. I got that internship. I was probably an intern there for about two years and then, you know, good timing. Uh, I got you know, offered a full-time role there. I wound up staying actually at that production company for five years. I've worked with HBO, with NBC, worked on Broadway, all because of that. It really kind of kicked off um, my career. Um, and, and I'm so grateful that I'm here now at Power to Fly. So, you know, that's a little bit about me. And I'd love for you to kind of tell us a little bit more about yourself, including where you're based and give us a little insight into your career journey. Sure. Uh, so again, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. This is a great opportunity to speak with folks. Um, so I am currently in Washington, D.C. Um, we're, we're kind of completely based here. Um, and uh, I my journey started in college um, when I realized that I just loved uh, being in colleges and associated with them. <laughs> so um, so I, took, um, I took an English degree and then you know, barring other great options, I decided to go get my PhD. Um, when I was doing my PhD, I loved teaching and I loved the academic life, but I also realized that I liked the other part of it, um, administration and um, other ways to help students. So um, I took a, a lot of positions in grad school that were related to that, um, including president of the Graduate Student Senate and things like that. Um, and then I taught for a couple of years, uh, and then I had the opportunity to switch uh, schools and teach for a year at a small college outside of Philadelphia called Ursinus College. And there, um, I again had the opportunity to go into administration, and I started advising students on prestigious fellowships and scholarships. Um, and then I kept on saying yes to things. So I kept on saying yes to opportunities that presented themselves. Um, and gradually increased my portfolio of responsibilities to include um, academic discipline and, and academic, uh, a really wide variety of academic things having to do with students. At the college, they had a requirement that students had to do some form of experiential education, and I was in charge of that requirement. Um, and then a friend of mine um, who was affiliated with the Washington Inter Internship Institute said that they were looking for a new leader, and I applied and uh, got the position. Um, so I've been here for seven years um, and I've been working you know, with a really committed staff to help students find great experiential learning opportunities here in the district. That's amazing. Yeah, my partner is an, is an admin and, and a teacher as well. And I have a lot of friends that are teachers and, and um, so that's great. And actually my, ad, my, um, my partner is also in charge of uh, um, disciplinary actions as well. So yeah. I, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> I, hear, I hear that all the time. Um, so yeah, you, you mentioned, of course, the Washington Internship Institute, which is why you're here today. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Because there's also so many great institutions, period, that are in yeah. Washington that I'm sure you all have connections with. Yeah. So we were founded in 1990. Um, the founder wanted an experience for students that was um, combined experiential learning, academic, uh, you know, uh, component and personal attention. So that's really been our hallmark from the beginning and has continued to this day. Um, so what we do is work with colleges and universities, about 30, 35 across the country and around the world to bring their students to Washington and help them find internship opportunities in Washington. 
Um, we really focus on personal attention. So we get to know the students one by one and um, get to know what their dreams are, what their aspirations are, what their interests are. And then we do research in Washington to help them find opportunities. So we'll come up with a list of places that we think would work well for them. And then we help them apply for them. So uh, we help them with cover letters and resumes, and interview preparation until they finally um, are able to secure that internship. Um, the, you know, our students intern at a really wide variety of places because we welcome students from almost every major. Um, and, you know, obviously we have students in the federal government, um, in Capitol Hill, in the Supreme Court, in the White House, and in departments and agencies. Um, probably the majority of our students, though, intern with nonprofit organizations. And by nonprofit here, I mean, you know, lobbying groups and advocacy groups and think tanks and, core, you know, um, industry organizations, as well as nonprofits here um, based in D.C. So um, <clears throat> places that serve the community. So I like to tell students they can either, ha either have a ground, you know, on the ground experience or a 30,000 foot view of, of the um, industry or issue that they're passionate about. Um, so when students come to Washington, they intern four days out of the week. Um, so they're getting a really substantial professional experience out of this. The other day of the week, they can take a couple of classes with us. Um, and then we have activities throughout the semester so they can get to know Washington. Um, so we, we try to instill in them that Washington is a great city beyond all the monuments and memorials, um, that it's a really vibrant, diverse, um, and global global city that has amazing things to do. I love Washington. Uh, it's been a while. I haven't traveled that much, of course, in the <laughs> right. last year and a half, but I do love Washington. I also love the idea that it's a four day a week internship because yeah. I know some, I've been in the position of managing interns sometimes when they come in just for a couple of days a week. And I don't never feel like they can really get you know, the mission of the company, really get into the nitty gritty right. with that kind of involvement. Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's kind of the norm here in Washington that places mm -hmm. want students for four, even five days a week, like the White mm -hmm. House internships are five days a week. Um, and so that's, you know, that's different from a lot of internships that students normally have in colleges where they might intern one or two days a week at the most. Um, you know, they're expected usually for a, for a semester's worth of, for one class credit, they're expected to intern 160 hours over the course of the semester, mm -hmm. which is only, you know, 10, 12 hours a week. So, um, Students just have so uh, so much richer um, experience by interning that much and really yes. can delve into a lot of different um, opportunities within the organization. So um, that's that's one of the benefits of, of the experience of, of having that sort of you know really intense um, and in depth uh, experience. Yes, completely. And and I was looking at some of your. Um you know, edicts really at uh, the Washington Internship Institute are education, support, and awareness about internships, and then helping to finally land that opportunity. Yeah. And really also this idea of capitalizing, having the students capitalize on their potential. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit more about how you as an institution help students accomplish those things? Yeah, so uh, I think one of the things that we really instill in students is that they have um, maybe more potential than they even thought. Um, we work with students from a really wide variety of institutions, um, you know, two of which are Hispanic serving institutions and others that serve, you know, first generation college students frequently. Um, those students may not have the networks um, that, that other students have to secure great internships. And so we come to every student with the, you know, idea that you can get you know, an internship that's really going to change your life in many ways and at least change your career. Um, and so one of the things that we do is just simply build students up um, and convince them that they're capable of doing these things. Um, so we do that throughout the application process by, you know, talking with them about their experience and their passions and, and then how to translate that, how to create the narrative of their experience that will be persuasive um, and interesting pr to prospective internship hosts. Then through the semester and their experience of having the internship, we're there to support them, you know, throughout the entire process. So the day that they're not interning, they take two classes with us. And one of those classes is called the internship seminar. And it's an opportunity for them to reflect on their experience, but also gain support from their peers and our faculty as they're going through this experience. Because I think there's a lot of imposter syndrome that they need to get over. Um, but, you know, we try to tell them from the get-go, they chose you. This internship chose you. So they think that you can do it. 
even though you may make mistakes, which you should, because this is a learning experience. And that's what, something that we also emphasize throughout is that you're going to make mistakes. That's the whole point. Um, they don't expect you to be professional, you know, from day one. Um, so those are some of the ways. But, but again, I think that personal sort of connection that we establish with students enables us to really address their needs um, and prepare them for the working world and, and in this context. Yeah, and I love that, you know, approaching that imposter syndrome, because often I remember having the same um, that same feeling yeah. when I would get an internship and think, well, maybe not a lot of other people applied. And then maybe a few weeks or a month down the line, you'd hear like, oh my gosh, like a hundred people applied for this. And it was right. like, oh my gosh, really? Yeah. Like, yeah. so it's great to actually like have that. And I think what what's fantastic that so much of what you're working on is doing is, is you really not getting these kind of skills in college. And I, you know, certainly I, you know, I went to NYU, pretty decent school, but I never once ever had a teacher sit me down and say, okay, this is how you get an internship. This is how you behave in like a professional atmosphere. Um, I never had any of those experiences. So I love that, you know, you're all working on, on that. And we actually did have a question uh, from someone in the chat, which they were asking, do you only work with students pursuing two and four year degrees? Um, we do on occasion work with graduate students um, and we're actually talking with one of our partner schools or actually an alumni uh, of our program who's a high school teacher about opportunities for high school students. A lot of the work that we do and a lot of the services we provide are driven by DC. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but Washington is run by interns. So pretty much all of these organizations in Washington know what they want um, and they want college students. Um, and for a variety of reasons, that's what they want. So, um, you know, we do, we do on occasion work with graduate students and we're looking at high school students, but um, the vast majority of our students are two and four year degree students. Yeah, that's great. And I've worked with a few Congress people over the years. So I get I totally get that, yeah. that part of it. Um, yeah. And kind of another question that I had for you kind of on this topic is how does the Washington Internship Institute partner with both government and corporate entities to provide internship opportunities to students? So, you know, are there particular um, ways that you're really partnering with them. And also maybe this is a good time to also talk about, you know, how you have seen that perhaps change over the course of the last, you know, year and a half, where of course the whole world is, you know, trying to figure out what is the way that we go forward. Yeah. I mean, I think that that we we have relationships with a really wide variety of organizations throughout the city. I think one of the challenges is that because we are so um focused on the individual students, we, can, we don't have a bucket of internships that we just throw at students. We want every student to have an individually tailored experience. And so that's why, you know, we have, you know, a long-term relationships with a really wide variety of places, but we also don't sort of say to these organizations, oh, we'll have a student for you, because we might not. Um, we might not have a student who is interested in that. So, um, so, but I think one of the things that we did during the pandemic is really become a resource to our partners of how to do an online internship. Um, so we really concentrate on getting good feedback from our students who first made that transition. And then we relayed that back to the organizations to say, here's what our students were saying our best practices. Now, you may have your own ideas about how to do an online internship, but this is how it might work best for students to, to excel in it. So, you know, we really focused on things like consistent feedback and consistent communication, um, having the internships be much more project oriented rather than sort of task oriented um, so that, you know, organizations were, you know, really had to think a little bit more creatively about how to do this. Yeah, I love I love the idea of also being more project based oriented rather than task oriented, because I also think internships can get that bad reputation that mm -hmm. we've seen from TV and movies where, OK, go get me a cup of coffee. Right. And it's like this task thing. And yeah. I remember the thing I got the most out of an internship was when you know someone really sat me down and said, you are owning this. And they gave mm -hmm. me, of course, the training to do it. Yeah. But they said, you know, you're owning this full project and then we're going to be working with you. It wasn't just like, oh, Rob 
go do this thing because I don't want to do it right now. Yeah, I mean, we get a lot of students who, you know, don't know all of the experiences that they could have in Washington. They basically know Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill internships can be awful. You know, um, they can be incredibly repetitive. They can be almost damaging to you because if you have to listen to angry constituents on the phone for eight hours a day, that, that can take a toll. Um, and so we, we tell students like, yeah, sure, um, we can try for Capitol Hill, but there are so many other opportunities in Washington and places that you've never heard of um, that, that could work a lot better and give you better professional experience. And can you also tell me a little bit more, you know, about the, the core courses and an internship <laughs> seminar for prospective students, maybe a little bit about these programs and how they're helping students progress in their careers? Yeah, so the core course is a policy oriented seminar and students can choose between one that's on US politics and policy and another that's on international and foreign policy. And in that class, you know, they may be used to that format because it's similar to a traditional academic seminar, but we're in DC. And so they're hearing from people who do that kind of work in Washington. They're going out and visiting places in an ideal world uh, where that work happens. Um, and it's also an opportunity for them to connect what they're doing in, your, in, in their internship with their academic career, both before and after this experience, um, which I think is really crucial because too many times college internships are these discrete experiences that the institution, the internship host, and the student don't make enough efforts to make those connections and to see how this fits into, again, a narrative of the student's academic career and their career moving forward. Um, the internship seminar is the place to do that. Um, so what we focus on are, you know, career building, you know, career skills building, like networking and interviewing mm -hmm. and communication. Um, and then also, you know, making connections again with what they hope to do in their next steps of their career and processing what they're learning right now. Because again, I think often in internships, students do the internship and don't take any time to reflect on what they're learning um, so that they're better able to communicate that. And again, add to their story um, as a professional what this experience meant. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think also so many people, I've used internships as well for the purpose of really figuring out, I think what you're also saying, figuring out what you want to do, because you go yeah. to this, maybe you go to a four-year college, you're studying this one thing, but you're not getting that real world experience. So you don't really know, is this the world I want to be in? And right. then those internships can really go, you know what, like, I like this and I like this, but I don't like this part of it. So maybe I don't exactly want to pursue foreign policy, but maybe right. I want to do something foreign policy adjacent. And you're not really going to get to know that without the internship. And then that next level of what you're saying, that kind of feedback that you're getting from your peers and also from the experts that you will all are, are, are bringing into the fold. Yeah, I, I, I joke that we've saved our students millions of dollars because yes. about half of the students who come in as pre-law and our program and say, I don't want to go to law school. This is not yeah. like law and order. This is not what I yes. had in mind. Um, so um, and I, I tell students about I give students my professional autobiography in part because um, it it basically all of my jobs have come through um, connections, through friends, mm -hmm. through net, my networks. But I also say that, you know, in college, I did a, you know, a part-time internship at a local elementary school because as an English major, I didn't know what, what else I could do. Um, I realized I did not like working with 10-year-old children. Um, yes. So that, it, that was great <laughs> to know before I started into a master's in education program. Mm -hmm. um, but so even the negative internships can be incredibly valuable because they narrow that field. They narrow exactly what you want to do. Amazing. Yeah. I actually had an internship where I was tasked with getting like a dead rat out from like the bleachers. So you know, that's on the more negative uh, internship side. Yeah. Send, the, send the small intern under there and get it. Um, <laughs> right. But um, when we were emailing, I thought this was something really interesting that you were mentioning. Um, you were talking about the connection between being a good professional and a good citizen. And I, I'm wondering if you can go a little deeper into what that means for you. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, regardless of our political affiliations, I think we can all agree that, you know, our country needs to, uh, a little bit better approach to being a citizen in, in uh, 
in these times um, and about building community. And so I saw that and I was trying to figure out a, a non hokey way of, of sort of helping students walk through what that might mean. Um, and I realized that, you know, when I was, I was sort of brainstorming about what I consider to be the qualities of a good citizen, and, and that would be, you know, a, a willingness to help, an open mind, um, a, a ability to communicate well with people, ability to, you know, be a part of a team or be a part of a group, um, an ability to think critically and to think carefully. Um, and to act, right? Those are all the good qualities of a worker, is of a professional, right? And so, you know, I wanted to sort of show students that those connections exist and also give them some skills about how to do that. And, and so we, we talked a lot in the internship seminar about how do we communicate with people who are, you know, maybe of a different political stripe than us, especially being mm -hmm. in Washington, we have to think about that. Um, and to think across, you know, think more about, why people think things and to get to know them and to get to know their reasons rather than just sort of dismissing people because they disagree with you on one issue. Um, and so those are some, and, and that ability to communicate is incredibly important in the workplace. And I think to be frank, it's, it's one of the things that students really need help with these days. They mm -hmm. really need the, the help to communicate better, both, you know, in person um, and, and also um, in writing. So that was one thing that, you know, we took on, especially given that we're in the nation's capital. Um, and to be, we are an apolitical nonprofit organization. We don't take sides in this, but we do take the side that we are pro-community <laughs> and pro-democracy and, and pro, you know, us, us doing a better job as a nation to, to get to know one another. So um, I think that the, uh, the connections there make sense. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing more work in that space. I think that's that's great. And I think you're right. I mean, I, I work remotely and I never want to go back, but I think um, to working in an office, but I, I think it was so important to, in my formative years, have worked in an office and really kind of learned what it means to work literally, you know, a couple of feet, if you're lucky sometimes from another person. Yeah. And, you know, what does that mean when you don't always agree on on everything in in? So I think that's fantastic. And yeah. we do have some people who are, are joining um, from inter, in, who are international. Um, mm -hmm. We have a big audience and community in India, especially. So I'm wondering, you know, if, are there opportunities that you all offer to international students? Yeah, so we have the ability through the State Department to sponsor students on J-1 visas, which are the internship visas in particular areas. And we have a specific website um, for, for international students to learn more about what that means. Um, really the only, you know, downside uh, that I can say or, or drawback of being an international student um, is that you can't usually intern with the federal government, but there are so many other opportunities in Washington for non-citizens that um, we've had great success and we partner with a university in Australia and a university in the Philippines to bring their students here. Um, so yeah, and I think it's a great opportunity for students, um, international students to use their language skills to learn about mm -hmm. actually how American government works on the ground um, and, and how those decisions and the work here um, affects their, their nations as well. That's great. And we're talking a lot about, of course, you know, what we think of as students, but if there's a lot right. of non-traditional students out there. We got yeah. a question in the chat. You know, what do you, you know, what do you suggest for people maybe in their mid-20s, maybe people that came from boot camps or certificate programs and are whether it's with you all or with you know similar opportunities, do you have any advice for those less traditional students? Yeah. I'm I think, you know, the, the thing that I always come back to to make students understand how they can be more attractive as candidates for these kinds of internships, especially, especially in Washington, D.C., is um, to demonstrate, you know, in their application how they are going to solve problems um, and how they are going to help um, these organizations. I think too often students spend their time in interviews and in cover letters saying how great they are, which is something you should do, um, <laughs> but they don't talk about the organization and how what they've done and how what they can do is going to change and going to help that organization. Because I know as someone who's recently hired a couple of people, if people don't talk about how they're going to help me, I don't, I don't care, you know, because I need their, I need their help. That's why I'm hiring someone. So I think that for students who have that experience and students who don't have that experience, but can translate that experience. Again, I, I, I'm an English major, I keep talking about stories and narratives, but telling, <laughs> telling your story and translating your story to how it affects 
that organization is a crucial skill and makes all the mm-hmm. difference. Oh, I once, yes. you know, I once interviewed a, a guy who his only experience was working at a, a cell phone store, had no experience in higher education, but I interviewed him because he showed me step by step how that experience could help him succeed in this role and help me help, you know, and help me. So I think that for non-traditional students, you know, especially I think also the world is changing when it comes to non-traditional students and um, I think you just have to tell your story in a compelling way and mm-hmm. make sure that the the interviewer or the hiring manager understands that what you've done is going to help them. No, I agree. And I, and I do think that the world is changing. And certainly when I was in high school, college, college, you know, that was the only thing that was kind of being driven into you. And I do see through our other events that this has changed now and knowing, of course, a lot of people that have gone into boot camps and as we were discussing earlier, might have started to pursue one thing and have pivoted to a next. And, you know, this whole summit is called also called mid-career pivots. And we have lots of talks on that coming up in the next few days. So I think that's very uh, apropos. Um, Just a couple of quick questions before we wrap up. Um, One person had a very specific question, which was, do you know if you have any relationships with the new digital course? We we haven't had any students intern with them yet. Um, But, um, you know, it's, again, everything that we do is based on what the students want to do. So um, I think it, it might also be a case that they're still trying to figuring out, you know, if they have an internship program and how that might work, but it's a really exciting opportunity. Great. And and someone here, this is kind of good lead us into a you know last question to find yeah. out you know more information about you. This person, Sam, was saying you know they have an MBA from an American university. How can they get an internship internship or attachment with your institute? So I guess this is also a good way to like let everyone know if there's a way that you know they can find out more information about you and want to find an internship. You know what else can they do? Yeah, so everything we do is online in terms of the admissions process. And and on our website, you can see student stories, um, so videos and and written stories that I think also give you a better sense of what it's like to participate in the program and what it's like to be an intern in Washington. Um, But our application process is all online and and explanations about how to do that process. It's a very simple process. Um, And I think one thing to keep in mind for, you know, John traditional students or graduate students is that, there are Department of Labor restrictions about internships and, you know, what constitutes them and about pay and credit. And sometimes that can really be a, a hurdle for some students who just want to, you know, try something out. Um, there are, you know, problems with unpaid labor. <laughs> and so the Department of Labor has restrictions. And so we have to follow those. And so does the internship posts. Yes, that getting the rat from the bleacher is my example. That right. was the unpaid labor, <laughs> I can tell you. Right. Um, but I uh, do um, want to just ask you one last question because our next folks are coming in just to leave everyone Great. with, um, if you could go back in time and give yourself a piece of advice when you were younger, um, do you, what would that one kind of piece of advice be, especially since we do have a lot of people earlier in their careers who are watching this right now? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that... Um... I, I don't have any regrets uh, about my career path, though it's been very strange and, and sort of haphazard in many ways. Um, so I think I think what I would tell maybe, especially my, my younger self, it, like much younger, like high school, is to um, make sure that I stay connected with people um, because I've lost some connections. Um, but I think, you know, everything in my career has pointed to the fact that networking is important and just maintaining relationships. And I think, um, you know, being more intentional about that, um, I think would probably be my advice and something that we inculcate in our students all the time. I think that's great advice. Thank you so much for being here today, Greg. Everyone can check out the Washington Internship Institute on their websites. Uh, really a great organization. Meg, we're going to send it back to you to carry on with our summit. Thank you both so much. That was absolutely amazing.